the sure treatment for, for any kind of mealybug is douse it with gasoline, light it on fire, and when they run out, you stab them with an uh, ice pick. <laughs> that, that gets them every time. It's your host, Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. Today, I'm hanging out in Long Beach, and I'm getting ready to go meet up with my buddy, Troy. We're headed down to go hang out with Gary Duke, and Gary is a cactus grower. He's been doing it for over 60 years. He's a sweetheart and one hell of a guy. And uh, we're gonna try to put him on the map. I know that you know Long Beach is really known for Sublime, the Queen Mary, the Agenda Trade Show, Snoop Dogg, all kinds of other stuff, but today we're changing that. It's Gary Duke, the Duke of Long Beach. Between my yard and this table and the greenhouse and between the buildings and everywhere else in the yard, I probably will have over a thousand different kinds of cactus and succulents. <laughs> today we're hanging out in Long Beach with Gary Duke, and Gary is a cactus grower. He's been growing for how long, Gary? Over 60 years. Over 60 years. Started at the age of 10. He's a hobbyist, he's an explorer, and he's also an author. So we're gonna be talking with him today about what he does. We're gonna be checking out his backyard nursery. He's got some incredible landscape plants and a wealth of knowledge, and he's gonna share some tips and tricks with us today. So can you kind of just tell us, I mean, we spent a few days earlier this week together talking. Right. Um, you know, in, in your book, right in the first page i'm a mama's boy so this really stood out and resonated with me it's dedicated to my mother who bought my first cactus when i was 10 years old um, my mom is where my cactus and plant story started as well on her patio so i was just wondering if you could kind of elaborate and kind of share some of the stuff that we were talking about well i grew up on a farm in illinois um, and it got very cold in the winter time um, but one year my parents decided they would go visit my mother's sister in phoenix we went out there for uh, right at Christmas time. We went out there for the holidays, and um, my mother bought me a little, you know, package of ca souvenir cactus, yeah. and took them home. And my dad helped me put them in a little planter in the kitchen window, and um, I grew them. And then when I got to be a, a sophomore in high school, I needed a biology project, something you know you could do show and right. tell and give a speech about and write a report and all that crap. And I couldn't figure out what I wanted to give it on. My dad said, "What well, do you got all those cactus in there in the window?" You know, give it on cactus. And um, I, so when I got to reading about them and, and you know, mainly I looked at an encyclopedia, <laughs> right? right. And, but I got really interested in the ge uh, geometry of their spines and all that kind of stuff. So that then it just kind of took off from there. I mean, I, um, uh, you asked why I dedicated to my mom. Well, one, she introduced me to the cactus and two, she was living here um, a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago or so when I wrote the book yep. and um, uh, that was why I had uh, so she was living here with you yeah in Long Beach okay yeah what is what did she think of what it what it developed into you know for buying you a cactus way back when to what it what it is when, now when she could walk with the walker she every day she would walk here to the back gate and back and when I get I was working at the time I'd come home and she'd tell me all the plants that was in bloom. She loved to see the cactus flowers. And I noticed that's one thing that you, like your Instagram, it's you you post all the photos of your blooming plants. Right. So you every day whatever's blooming, that's what I post. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. And so you, what what inspired you to write the book? <laughs> what was the thing that what what was the moment where you're like, there you know what, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make a book, I'm gonna do this. There's, I heard some speakers say. Uh, that talked on landscaping that says you got to do swaths of color well I agree swaths of color are great right but to me it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way it's not very practical you can't do For your a, average person right you can't do a swath of color in a condo yard right and there's more condo yards in California than anything else right so what can you do in small spaces that's what turned me on to um, no I said I knew, you know, I've grown cactus all over the country. I spent 20 years in the military. Right. And I've grown cactus in Illinois and Omaha and Dayton, Ohio and Montgomery, Alabama and California and Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've grown and I've moved plants, so I know how to do that. Area so and I'd plants. also gone to some CSSA conventions where there were tours of, you know, uh, local yards. Right. And I, and I, taken a lot of pictures and there were some very good ideas there 
uh, and I'd also visited some of the botanical gardens. And, and the, you know, uh, the Huntington is exquisitely landscaped. And Joe Clements is my um, uh, kind of mentor. He also landscaped uh, Pitzer College. Okay. I noticed he had a lot of photos from Pitzer College in the right. book as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, and when I, so I p first put together a talk. Um, that was on landscaping and microclimates. You know, what can you do from that perspective? And then I got to thinking, uh, why not write a book? And so I just annotated on PowerPoint, you know, mm -hmm. all of the, uh, the charts. And um, I had a friend that said, I was then inquiring people about uh, publishing software. And a guy that's a professional editor said, Gary, just send me the PowerPoint and let me look at it. Right. And he put the whole book together. Nice. Um, from, you know, the, the pictures and the PowerPoint. Very good. And um, so it, it just, it all worked out in about a period of about six months I wrote the book. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, it. you know, <laughs> we were kind of talking about this before we the cameras were rolling, but I think, you know, one of the things that after I spent the last couple of days really going through the book and looking at it and looking at some of the challenges that I'm having in my yard right now, um, you know, I have a small back patio that faces to the north. I'm up against the foothills. Um, you know, that gets a lot of morning sun most of the year, and it gets a lot of sun most of the year, but I have a ton of plants back in there in one particular area, and it is with the shifting sun moving into the fall and winter, they are now mostly shaded almost all day. And so it's, if I had something like the, the chart that you have in here, to look at and really figure out, okay, this is where it's going to be this time of year would have been helpful because now, and I, some are grounded, not they're not all in pots, so <laughs> I have some work to do, you right. know, and a couple of them, it's an agave, so it's going to be a tremendously uh, laborious task, <laughs> uprooting that thing with its pups and how deep those roots are going to be, and I don't really have anywhere else to put them. <laughs> so it's like, no, the, the, the book has a chart in it yep. that looks at the sun angle and how you can take it out in your yard and look at the, what's going to be in shade and what's going to be in sun. But I also give you the um, um, URL that you can go to the site uh, that's uh, the University of Oregon that uh, has the software. Right. And you can generate that chart for wherever you live in the country or in the world for that right. matter. You just put in your latitude and longitude and it generates a chart for your area. And I think right now this is, this is kind of uh, the, the perfect time because with what's going on in the world, most people are spending a heck of a lot more time at home and a lot more time in their yards and gardens. So I think that, that uh, yeah, it's a perfect book. And, uh, and I'll, I'll drop a link in the description. I'll make sure that you have all of Gary's information so you could reach out to him directly so that if you want to get a copy of the book that you can do that. Um, so I'll link all his social media stuff in the description below. Um, and then I'd like to take a chance. We can kind of stroll around. If you want to start in the front yard, there's some lessons learned out there. Yeah, let's do it. This is my front yard, and there's two things I'd like to say about my front yard. One, I couldn't figure out how to shape my mounds when I moved here about 10 years ago. So I did hire a professional landscaper to lay them out, but he had drought tolerant bushes and agaves. And I said, no, I'm not into drought tolerant bushes. I want cactus and succulents. Right. But I did keep his idea on, on the, um, the layout of the mounds. But the lesson I learned from him was he said, go about two houses down and stand in the middle of the street and look at what you can see while I saw this area. He said, put a focal point there for people to uh, look at. And then when you're about one house down, he says, pick another focal point, which is the Euphorbia Mach. You want to guide your visitor's uh, viewpoint from your focal point in the middle of the front yard to your front door. And this, you want to do the same thing when you go out your back door and look at your patio. Pick something that's a focal point. It can be a piece of art. It can be a nice plant. It can be a gazebo. Right. It didn't make any difference what it is, as long as when you open up, that's what you see, and then you paint your picture around it. Right. My first introduction to you, Gary, was actually through a webinar. Um, the, the way I ended up coming over here is you had mentioned that you sell plants. I, I used to only sell plants three times a year. One was to help uh, those two societies 
uh, earn money for their speakers. And then I would open my backyard up one day a year to allow mainly the people of those societies. And then I kind of opened it up to anybody else in Southern California that could come in one or two days, you know, a Saturday or Saturday and Sunday that seemed to expand to buy plants uh, and see my collection because I have a greenhouse, I have hutches, I have different styles of things, different ways of landscaping. And so, you know, there's a lot here that people could learn. Right. So it wasn't until um, this year that I began selling on the internet on my uh, Instagram site. Right. This side of the table all the way down is what my sale plan. Okay. Well, I like in, any cactus because <laughs> yeah. I love their flowers. Right. But do you have a particular genus that's your favorite? Two. Two. I have... You've narrowed it down to two. That's that's a task. Well, three. <laughs> Sorry. I like Neoporteras. Okay. And I like Copiapoas and Areocarpus. Okay. This and is, you said you were going to let me take I'm, this one home, right? Is that what you said? No way. <laughs> I like the Kringziana a lot. And Gary, you went down into the field, right? You got some drone footage there? Right, this is um, down in Chile. And we'd hiked up the uh, canyon that you can see down at the bottom. And um, these are um, Copiapoa Kringziana in habitat. It's beautiful. That's these are old plants, huh? What would you estimate that big clump right there? Oh, good grief. Uh, 50 to 150 years old at least. At least. I mean, they grow a lot slower in habitat because there's not any, uh, uh, all I get is fog. Right. Uh, so they grow a lot slower than in your in your garden. Gotcha. Yeah, this is definitely one of the places that I, is on my list um, that I really want to go to. And then you also have uh, some shots where you hiked up further. Right. That's Fred Dortport up there um, taking a picture. He climbed up to take a good picture. Holy cow, that thing's huge. Are those all Cranziana? Those all are all Cranzianas. And you went there, it was 2019? Now this is uh, Copiapoa um, Calma Alba, I believe. And um, I mean, it's just mind boggling the number and expanse that they grow in. I mean, those are all probably 100-year-old plants. I mean, it's just, it blows my mind every time I, I see the video. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. So I'm getting a large fraction of the total number of copiapoas. And these are old enough that they produce seeds, so I've got a lot of uh, seed. Yeah, you have a, uh, you, you definitely have a very nice uh, collection of, of copiapoas, that is for sure. I mean, I got Atacomensis, I got Diobata, I got Cocombiana, I mean. My I, favorite one that you have, well, you'd think it might be this one, but honestly, I think my favorite one that you have is this guy right here. Oh. That's, I, he's like, it, I don't, I mean, Enormous, maybe, but he's pretty close to yeah, he's, no spines. Yeah, I, I mean, that one to me is like I just need to a, put, I, all of these need to be put in bigger pots. As you're looking in here at these area carpets, um, I have, I think, most species of area carpets. There's Fissuratus, there's Cotrubianus, there's Agavoides, um, uh, several different forms of Retusus. Um, I got um, Hintoni and Scaphorostris over here on this side, but a lot of the, most of the area carpets bloom first. Retusus bloom second, and uh, Cotrubianus and some of the others bloom a little bit later. So what is your oldest? Uh, a Fissuratus only grows two or uh, four of these tubercles a year. And if you count all of those up, this plant's probably well over 100 years old. And this is Pachycladus, I think. So Piloso serious Pachycladus? Just Pachycladus. Pachycladus. I think so. 
but it is, yeah, very, very blue. Is there such a thing as getting mealies in the soil? Yes. I I've gotten questions there's about that. There's spine mealies, there's, other, there's mealies, little cottony type mealies, and then there's soil mealies that you don't see. And all of a sudden your plant kind of starts drying up and that's because they're sucking the juice out on from all the roots. Typically what happens, they all poke a hole, any of those three poke mm -hmm. a hole, and it's typical, and that makes an entryway for fungus to enter the plant. Typically, you'll lose a plant due to the fungus from where the insects have bit it before you lose it because they suck too much juice out. What I can tell, like mm -hmm. everybody has a bit of a different way of right. doing it. What would you do for something like this? Well, this is a, it's called spine mealy. Um, in, in like my potted plants, mm -hmm. I'll water, almost every time I water, I'll put a, some dish soap in there. Okay. If you hit the bug, it'll kill it. If you don't hit the bug, it doesn't, but it pretty well kind of manages the population, mm -hmm. you know, keeps it down. Mm -hmm. Neem oil works uh, very well, but you need to be, not use neem oil in uh, hot weather, because it's also like a herbicide, it, it'll kill your plant or damage the growing point of like a, a, a Dudley or an Echeveria. Hmm. So neem oil works, or uh, I mean, you can use a systemic like orthene. So when the plant absorbs it, any bug that uh, that bites it, if you think you something's working on the roots, that's about the only option that you have. Mm -hmm. But the problem with orthene is if the plant blooms, the pollen uh, is also infected because the, the plant generated it and you can kill bees with it. Hmm. So I use uh, orthene uh, on like my seedlings, which I know aren't going to bloom for a long time, and that keeps the fungus gnats away. I use predominantly dish soap and um, neem oil. Plants out here in the landscape, of course, don't get treated with, with dish soap, and so yeah, I get little spots that, that pop up, and then I have to treat those. Interesting. Okay? Yes. That's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching it all the way through. I really hope you enjoyed it. We had a heck of a time making it. I really hope you got to see a glimpse into to Gary's world. Uh, he's got the biggest heart and he's extremely generous with his time and his knowledge. Reach out to him on Instagram at GaryDuke53. He'll sell you a copy of his book, invite you out. You can go buy plants. He's an amazing guy. Make sure if you do like the video, Hit the like button, share it with a friend that likes cactus and this kind of stuff too, and follow me on Instagram at CactusQuest. Until the next time, peace.